Welcome to Unlocking Science. Our goal is to glorify God by studying and unlocking the secrets of His amazing creation. I'm your host, Mr. P, and today we're going to show you how to build some of the barometers that we demonstrated in our episode called Weathering a Storm. So the first one we're going to look at today is a wet barometer and then a dry barometer. You can find the description, supplies, and instructions for this in a PDF at the link in the description. So let's look over here at the wet barometer first. I bet you can guess why this is called a wet barometer, because it's got wet stuff inside of it. It's got liquid inside of it. So a barometer is a device that helps us measure the air pressure, the amount of pressure that's pushing down on us, and it can help us predict whether weather patterns are changing. If the barometer is falling, a low pressure stormy system is coming in. If the barometer is rising, then a high pressure clear system is coming in. So all you need for this are some basic supplies. The only thing you might need to purchase special is this piece of tubing. And if you really wanna make this activity extra fun, make sure this is a root beer bottle and you come along with a set of ice cream, vanilla ice cream, make some root beer floats, enjoy that time together as a family together, then build this activity. Okay, so the basic idea is to take this bottle and then we're going to insert the tubing down inside here. So this tubing, you can get at a hardware store, uh, probably 3 16 or 1 8 inch diameter would work the best. So the first thing you're gonna need to do, and this is why we need uh, adult supervision with these things, we're gonna use something like scissors or a utility knife or a pocket knife, about two thirds of the way up the bottle here, or right where the starts to taper, I'm going to puncture the bottle without cutting myself and just make a little hole that's big enough for that tubing to fit through. So it doesn't have to be exact. That tubing will fit through that hole. Make sure that fits. Okay, so we've got the tubing to fit through there. And then we don't need the cap to be on this one tight, but it's going to help control some of the evaporation. And I'm going to cut off the tubing so that it'll sit down in the bottom just above there and it's probably gonna take about a foot to 18 inches. If you're gonna purchase it, probably get about two feet of tubing. So we can cut off this tubing to about a foot, set that excess aside, and then we're going to use this as our tube to hold our water. The next thing you might wanna do is construct our little scale. So all I've got here is a piece of cardstock. I've folded a little edge down it. You can use a ruler to make marks from the top down so that you can see the different graduations. So if we come in here and look at this example, we can see the different marks that we've made down along here, and that's gonna determine our water level, right? So you can tape that right here to the side of the bottle, and it's gonna line up right here along the side of your tube, and then tape the tube. So I used a clear, heavy packing tape, so that stuck well, but other types of tape will work as well. So to make the thing, the uh, water inside visible, I'm gonna add a couple drops of food coloring. And the more we have in there, I'm gonna go for six drops. I'd probably go with green or purple if it were me doing it, but um, we got some green food coloring here. And I'm gonna fill this bottle up. Now I definitely don't want it to be higher than the level of the tubing. I'm not gonna spill anything, but if we do spill stuff, we can clean it up. And just remember, kids, making messes is fun, but you have to help clean them up. All right, we're almost full here. Now what's gonna happen in this barometer is the air above us is gonna be pushing down on the surface of the water, and it's gonna force water up inside of this tube. And as the pressure changes, we should be able to measure the change in that uh, water coming up and down. So the pressure, as it increases in a high pressure system, is gonna force the water up the tube. In a low pressure system, it'll go back down the tube. Okay, so this is the tricky part. You can use a piece of chewing gum or a piece of Play-Doh, some type of dough or clay, anything like that, that's gonna plug the hole. So I've got a matching green one here to go with my color. And I'm going to, you can do this two ways. You can either suck up the liquid through a straw and quickly put the, the top on here. But we wanna trap the liquid somewhere up in this level. So it would be similar to our example over here. We just want the liquid somewhere in here. It doesn't matter exactly where it is. I'm gonna make sure that my tube is not on the bottom. Other way that you could do this, 
you could feed this tube down in there and it's going to draw up that liquid right up into the edge. That way I don't have to suck on the tube. And as I lift this out, you can see that the water has stayed trapped inside of there. I've got a little, oh no, we're losing it. I don't, must not have a good seal up here. Let's try that one more time. This is the trickiest part. If you can get this part down, you got it all. We roll a little tube to stick down inside there. Getting a good seal around there is the trick. And then we're going to pull this up and that'll hold the air, the air pressure inside of here and the water level staying there. I'm going to tape my little cardboard piece onto here, make my scale. And then <clears throat> you can read your scale off of the level of where the green liquid is. Okay, so that's the instructions for making the wet barometer. Over here, <clears throat> we've got the dry barometer set up. Now this is a little different. What we've got here, we're gonna construct this device. And this is called a dry barometer because it's dry. <laughs> There's no liquid inside of this one. We just have a latex membrane, a rubber membrane right here. And this membrane is what's measuring the air pressure. So there's air inside of the jar and I've sealed it off very tightly. Just the trick to this one is to get the jar sealed up as tightly as we can. And then this pointer here is gonna tell me the air pressure. As the air is pushing down, if it's a higher pressure system than when I filled the jar, this pointer will point up. If it's a lower pressure system, then the, um, the top of the balloon will pop up and it'll, the pointer will move down. So this will help us see the relative air pressure based on uh, when we made the, made the device. Okay, so what we need for this one is just a large balloon and a large mouth jar. It doesn't have to be a glass jar, it can be a plastic jar. The bigger, if you had a really big balloon, you could get a bigger uh, mouth like this. The bigger the mouth, the more um, precise the measurements would be, the better it would be. But I'm gonna take this and simply snip off about where the neck of the balloon ends. And if I had sharper scissors, okay, I'm gonna stretch this out and I'm gonna get it right over the mouth of this jar. This might be helpful to have somebody holding this with you. And I wanna try and get this, I got a big old bump in the middle there. So we're gonna try and get this down as flat and smooth as we can by stretching this out to the sides. Okay. It might help to blow up the balloon a little bit before you do this to get it all stretched out nice and smooth. This one does not want to cooperate. And so if we get this stretched, there we go. Got a nice stretch on that one. It's nice and flat and smooth. Now right now the air pressure inside the jar is the same as outside the jar. I'm going to put a rubber band around here and I've got one that I can double over make a nice tight, tight like a drum. Okay. This is going to be my pointer and my indicator. And again, we're just going to tape this along the edge over here. And um, this indicator is going to be our needle to move up and down. Now, general rule of thumb, I'm going to take this. This is a bamboo skewer. You could use a craft stick or a toothpick, something long and skinny like this. So I'm going to take the diameter of my jar I'm going to use a pair of pliers or a pair of scissors and just snip that off. That doesn't have to be anything fancy. Now this is where I want to get the end of this stick right in the middle. I want to use a tiny little dot of glue. You could use a glue stick or something as well. You don't want much glue on there. T tiny little dot. That's all I need. I'm going to try and get that as close to the center as I can. And just that little dot right there in the middle. So now this rim of the jar is going to act like the lever as my lid or if the balloon comes up, the pointer is going to go down acting on that lever on the edge of the jar. Can tape my little sheet right here to the side and then I can make a mark right where my zero line is so that it's exactly flat like you see over here in the model. So the pencil line marks where my zero line is. If the next day I see the needles below the line, then I can expect it's going to be changing to stormier conditions. It's above the line, it should be clear. So all those things help us understand weather, the way God's created things, and they can help us predict 
things that are going to happen in the future. Now, God's the only one who knows the future for sure, but we can definitely understand some of the, the ways he's created things, and barometers are a great tool. And until we see you next time, get out and enjoy God's amazing creation.